10 years ago, Adidas unleashed Boost to the world and it's had some major highs and has probably come down to its lowest point, which is not that bad. The hype has died down. Boost isn't exactly life anymore, but that doesn't matter to your boy, the Chumoyer, because I still like to rock a good Ultra Boost. It's a nice dog walking shoe. It's a nice everyday shoe. In fact, I wear Boost slides around the house well, pretty much any time I'm in the house because we have hardwood floors. But regardless, Adidas has released their new Ultra Boost 23 and I managed to get my hands on the women's solar red, white, and black colorway. And I gotta tell you, I really like this silhouette. I love the 22 and I think I love the 23 a little bit more. So uh, let's get down to it. What's up, y'all? It's Daniel, your Chumoyer. And yes, today we are talking about the Ultra Boost 23 women's in the solar red, white, and black colorway. I managed to pick this up off of Champs. It's really hard to find. In fact, I've only seen a few releases of both a men's or a women's colorway in an all black or this colorway, etc. I'm not sure exactly when Ultra Boost 23 is officially unleashed to the world based on some sites. It's already happened on based on others. Yeah, it's supposed to come later on in February. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this shoe because as I mentioned, I really like this. I wasn't a fan of the 19 or the 20, but when they, I think came out with the more sleek, some would say the uh, Yeezy uh, 380 inspired silhouette, regardless, that's when I started taking note again, though I still rock with the one, two, three, four and 5.0 and the DNAs. But regardless, let's get into this Ultra Boost 23 silhouette. Upgraded with a lighter boost midsole that doesn't compromise on cushioning comfort. The magic lies in the light boost midsole, a new generation of Adidas boost with even more energy return. According to something I came across on the internet, so take it with a grain of salt, the new boost is supposed to be 30% lighter compared to previous models with boost. The upper retains the prime knit upper that retains the look and feel of the Ultra Boost 22 with the TPU cage in the midfoot and a heel cup at the heel. The foot hugging prime knit upper is crafted with high performance yarn that contains at least 50% parley ocean plastic and 50% recycled polyester. The outsole shows light debossed and boost embossed on the white boost with solar red TPU bordering the perimeter of the midfoot and heel and you find both gray and black continental rubber on the heel and forefoot respectively. The Adidas Ultra Boost 23 Women's in the solar red white black colorway was released earlier on champs.com and retailed for 190 US American dollars. Hibbit is showing a release date of February 9th, though StockX shows that the shoe released on December 27th, 2022. Now you'll notice that, yes, the price for the Ultra Boost did go up $10 to $190. We're approaching that $200 price point. Call it inflation, call it more boost, call it R&D, I don't know, whatever. Regardless, the shoe did go up in price and that was for the women's. And so I don't think women's shoes typically are cheaper than men's, though sometimes they are. But in this case, the shoe went up $10. Now, when it comes to fit, I'm normally a size 9.25, but that shoe size doesn't exist. So sometimes I go to a nine, sometimes I go to a nine and a half, or I just kind of figure out in between. In this silhouette, I ordered a women's 10 and a half, which translates down to a men's size nine. And to me, this fits perfectly. I don't know what it is about the uh, translation between women's to men, but when I get the 10 and a half in a women's, it fits me better than when I get a normal nine in a men's. When I get the nine, I have to remove the insole, but it still fits fine. Now this shoe to me, again, getting the women's size fits fine. And I went to the traditional translation of women's to men fit, which is a size and a half up or down if you're going women's to men. If you were to get a women's silhouette and it was a little too tight, you can always remove the thin insole. Or if it's too big, I guess you could wear thicker socks or put in a different insole, whatever have you. Now, when it comes to comfort, I still maintain that the Ultra Boost is one of the three most comfortable silhouettes, technologies, etc., on the market today. I think that React has really kind of gotten close. I think there are some Yeezys that got super, super high on comfort. And then of course, I feel like the Nike Air Jordan 1 Zoom Comfort is up there. But Boost, Ultra Boost to me, it still takes the cake. I think 380s, whether it's the 350 V2 Compact or the 380 or this new Ultra Boost, 
it's all kind of comfortable in the same way because it has so much boost. Now you can see from the pictures and the video that there seems to be a little bit more boost. It seems thicker with two C's, maybe three C's. It seems fatter, P-H-A-T-T, -T. Um, but you definitely are not sitting on top of all that boost like the 2022. You are sitting inside of the boost, but still on top of quite a bit. And one thing you'll also notice on the back of the shoe is that it doesn't have that straight cut across the bottom of the silhouette. There does seem to be that little indention on the middle of the shoe that runs pretty much all the way through from the heel to the forefoot. I don't know how that affects the gait or your heel to toe or anything like that. I'm sure it has to do with stabilization, TPU, boost, etc. Smarter people than me could tell you about it, but I'm not sure if all of this changes was meant for lifestyle, maybe for running, but as I've talked to many of my serious runner friends, they don't run on Ultra Boost. So I'm not really sure if this shoe is just like a cool running shoe for lifestyle people or it's a lifestyle shoe for runners. Nah, either way, uh, I don't think serious people really run on this, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comment section down below. So fresh out of the box, oh, go listen to that podcast. The shoe is pretty comfortable. It doesn't feel too squishy when you put it on, but I think when you work it in just a little bit, it gets a little bit more squishy and bouncy. So if you're hoping for maybe that 380, 350 type like, oh, squish, you don't get it right away. This has a little bit firmer feel, which for some is fine, for others may not be a big deal. I don't know, for me, it's okay. I really like the way this shoe feels. I love the way it looks. It definitely has a more aggressive uh, look to it with uh, the way it goes down from the tongue all the way to the toe box. Also the way the back comes up. Like it looks like a really sleek, cool sports car. I love the way cars look on the back sometimes. And uh, yeah, I do have an affinity for maybe that part of the female body. But I love the way this looks. I love the whole silhouette. I think it's super cool. I think it's kind of, futuristic, modern, whatever you want to call it. And I definitely think it's a nice next step in the Ultra Boost family. Again, acknowledging that Ultra Boost hype is all but dead, but that doesn't matter to me. I wear what I want to wear and I think everybody should be able to wear what they want to wear. And uh, I don't sneaker same. So if you don't like it, it's all good. If you love it, that's all good too. It's got an updated sort of uh, prime knit upper pattern here on the front with the perforations or speed holes. And you have that nice outline. This particular color is like a sky blue, a light blue. They don't even mention it on the official color uh, indexing of the shoe, but regardless, whatever. Anyway, I love the shoe. I think it's great. I think it's super comfortable. And I hope they release a lot of cool colorways. My dog's very excited about it. I hope they release a lot of colorways. And I'd love to see some collaborations with the Ultra Boost 2023. I know it's not like, oh, the cool silhouette, but can you imagine uh, what, what, what cool stuff could happen? I know this won't happen, but like a union, a social status, an Ama Manier, um, a Joe Fresh Goods. Oh, man, that could be so much fun. I know that there's whole contractual stuff and blah, 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 blah. But um, I don't need the hype to go back to what it was when it was crazy. I don't want it to go back to what it was when it was crazy. But I would love, love to start seeing my collection fill up with a little bit more Ultra Boost as we get more and more stories, more and more collabs. We'll see if that happens. Who knows? Adidas isn't exactly known for being able to sustain their hype. They're too busy working on sustaining the world, which, which probably is the better play. But if you're a sneakerhead, maybe you want a little bit more storytelling, a little bit more fun, a little bit uniqueness when it comes to their silhouettes. But hey, I digress. Let me know what you think about the Ultra Boost 23, particularly this women's solar red colorway. I don't know when other ones are gonna release. You can kind of find them in the wild. I searched and searched and searched and it was really hard to actually find a pair, a silhouette that I could grab in my size or that was available at all. So maybe you've had better experience with that and maybe there's just a bigger, more uh, verbose, maybe fantastical release date coming up with a lot more social media push or whatever. So let us know in the comment section down below what you think about this silhouette. And to all of you out there, wherever you are, thanks for watching. Stay tuned and just chill. Till the next episode.